Mitch. So we just finished talking to Roger. Obviously, he will be new to Buffalo, but for you today, the news is an extension. So why was that something that you were interested in doing and, you know, committing to this organization for a couple more years? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's at a point now where in this – this is just a place for me to be. It's for my family to be a uh, very fortunate position to be in. Um, it just, it was, it was a great opportunity to, the dialogue had been going on for a few days. Uh, it really started a few weeks ago. And um, I mean, for me personally, I'd love to retire in a Buffalo Bills uniform. And uh, this gave me an opportunity to continue playing. Uh, I think both sides mutually came to a point where they were uh, happy with the deal. And then um, it's so excited. We're elated as a family. We're, we're thrilled and we're looking forward to this next step as a team and as a family. And, you know, obviously when we do just talk to Roger, he's coming off a pro bowl season. It seems like he's a new addition to the line. You know, what did you think about the line as a unit last year and what can he bring to maybe take you to that next step? Well, I think it, it's not, it's not lost upon anyone that as an offensive line, I feel like we hit our stride as the season progressed. Um, you know, we would have liked to put some uh, games together, especially earlier in the, the first half of that season that, uh, that kind of matched the second half. Um, but Roger, I mean, an established veteran in this league, like you said, a pro bowler, uh, I mean, just physically imposing a very physical player. Uh, he's been doing it at a high level for a very long time and we're excited to have him. And uh, looking forward to working with him and uh, trying to take this next step as a team. Hey, Mitch, it's Sal, man. What's up? How are you? What's up, Sal? How are you? I love that watch, dude. Look at you. Uh, yeah, I see. All right, dude. Go off, man. Thank you, brother. Um, two quick ones for you. Number one, go back a year ago. I don't know if this was on your mind or anything, but there was a little contract tweak and stuff. Was was this something you expected maybe a year down the road that, you know what, <laughs> we do this, and then a year later, you're going to sign an extension to stay here? Uh, if we're being honest, um, yeah, that came out. I mean, last year, it wasn't like an ultimatum, right? It wasn't like you take this pay cut or else. Uh, you know, they had front-loaded my previous contract, and, I mean, I wasn't naive, right? I had no more guarantees, and um, – and, uh, and it was just, it was kind of similar to this situation. Both parties came together and they found a place. Um, you know, I, the old saying is if both parties are uncomfortable, that usually means it's a good contract, right? So, um, no, I, I think after last year, I learned just to enjoy the moment, right? None of this is guaranteed. That's just the truth of it all in, in this league or in this business. Um, and also nothing is personal. You can't, you have to re remove church and state. You have to, re and it's hard to do, especially in this business that's very emotionally driven, very emotionally taxing to remove business and, uh, and, um, and personal stuff. So uh, no, I, I didn't expect this to come down the, the pipe here this time last year. Uh, very fortunate. Um, but this kind of shows how this, this game, like it has ebbs and flows and uh, how people's careers and stuff just kind of, you got you got to go with it, man. Uh, it's a testament to the guys and the group and uh, the front office for believing in me, and uh, that's very much appreciated. And what familiar familiarity do you have with Aaron Cromer? To be honest, not very much. Um, we we I mean, when he was hired here, we had a very nice conversation. Um, really liked what he had to say. We really just talked about a lot outside of football, which I really enjoyed, and. Um, so to be honest, I'm really looking forward to working with him. I mean, his resume is, is pretty outstanding and uh, we'll go from there. All right, man, get up first jewelers in Niagara Falls. I endorse him on the radio. <laughs> I dig it, dude. I, we'll talk about it later. Appreciate it, Sal. Thanks brother. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey Mitch, this is Jay with the Buffalo news. Congratulations. Um, you, toward the end of uh, the season, it might've even been in the playoffs. I think I asked you about your, season individually and understandably at that point in time you weren't much interested in talking about that but I'm sure you've had a chance now to sort of review it um how did you feel about the season that you were able to put together personally last year um I feel like for me as a center I, I kind of I judge that and 
on, on how I helped the rest of the guys around me. And I feel like last year I was able to take a step in the right direction with communication, uh, dialogue with the quarterback, dialogue with the offense, and just kind of being able to see stuff going on. So in that regards, felt uh, felt like a, a much improved season. Um, I think playing wise, just availability was a big thing. It's always something you strive for as a player. Uh, you know, you, you can't predict everything, but you can you can try to mitigate any factors that remove you from the field. Uh, so, I mean, in that regard, it's also great. We're just trying to take that next step, not only as a team, but I think as a player, I, I feel like there's a lot I left on the field and I'm looking forward to trying to trying to narrow that gap is what I'm trying to do. Sal alluded to it, but obviously when, you know, your contract gets changed a little bit, um, was there a part of you that used that as any kind of motivation heading into last year? No, no, to be honest, that at that point last year, um, I decided just to take my hands off the wheel, focus on football and let the rest chips fall where they may, um, whether that be riding the rest of this contract out or uh, any other option. And um, I was very feeling very fortunate to be in this position today. I uh, would be lying to you if I said that I saw this happening a year ago. Um, but I mean, like I said before, you just got to ride the ebbs and flows. And uh, it, like, like I said, Bean didn't come to me last year with an ultimatum. Uh, it was kind of one of those things that uh, both sides came to an agreement and uh, it was the right move for both parties at that time. And then, um, you know, I feel like I tried to take a step as a leader and, and, and I, I think this showed that uh, they appreciated what I brought to the table. I'm hoping to build on that next year. Thanks, Mitch, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you, Jay. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mitch. Uh, George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good, George. How are you? Good, pretty good. Uh, boy, better talk with you from the last time I saw you after the game there in Kansas City uh, during the Zoom session then. How do you, how do you, you, you mentioned it in the previous question there in your previous answer, uh, that you left some, you felt you left some something out on the field. You guys left a lot on the field. How do you get back now with the guys after such an emotional game and come back this season to regroup and say, hey, how do you, how do you get rid of that or flush it and and start anew? Well, um, it's a good question. I think every year, every year you hit a reset button, right? Uh, whether it, the season ended the way you wanted to, which for thirty-one teams is not the case, or it didn't. Um, I would be lying to you if, if, if I'm like working out or doing practice and I think of just one, you know, that one game as like motivator. What it does is it leaves a bad taste in your mouth and, and it lets you look at the grand scheme of things, the grand scope of what in that one game, what's the microcosm of that one game that I can fix, right? Maybe that's my communication. There's one or two plays in that game that were paramount plays that I, maybe I didn't quite come up to the standard that I needed to and that put us in a position where we failed. Well, maybe I can look back at the rest of the season and see – well, maybe, maybe there's an underlying thing here. So you work on that. Well, maybe my short yardage footwork in that game wasn't the best. Well, maybe that's something I need to work on because I struggle with that all year. Uh, so you look at that. And, and then, um, I mean, I think what it does is that you realize the opportunities that we have. They're fleeting in this business, whether it be contractually or, or people just on, this, uh, on the team. Every team is different. Um, so I think we have an opportunity you know, we, you'd like to say it's this unlimited opportunity, but in retrospect, in hindsight, it's probably, or, you know, or not hindsight, but to be on the, the margin is small and our op window is it's a rapidly slamming shut. So we're really hoping to uh, take advantage. Yes, and, and, uh, no problem. And, and last question for you. Do you think it, it kind of helps a little bit that you're going to get some new faces coming in this year? It's not going to be the exact same team that that was in that game this year. You, I see you already have a new uh, offensive lineman, uh, Roger Saffo, look like he's joining the group, uh, the offensive line. Do you think that'll even help even more with newer with faces that weren't here last year? I mean, I I don't want to take away from the guys who were here and put us in a position to go to the AFC Championship game two years ago and make it a divisional round. Uh, we lost some really good football players and great teammates these last few days. And uh, I'd be lying to you if I didn't feel that personally. Those are good friends. Um, sometimes a change of scenery is great for all parties. Uh, sometimes new faces bring fresh perspective. Uh, I think that's been alluded to when it comes to like, you know, Dorsey as the OC and uh, with a new QB coach, a new O-line coach. So 
Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure that it'll have its challenges because there's been rapport that we lost. We lost rapport, a group of guys that we've had rapport with, whether it be personally or professionally. So now we have to reestablish these relationships. Uh, every team, like I said, has this new identity. So now we have to form that with new faces. It's a great challenge and an opportunity to be better. All right. Thank you very much. And look forward to seeing you at training camp this coming season. Thank you, George. What's up, Mitch? Congratulations. Thank you, Maddie. Um, you alluded to your familiarity with this group. Why do you think your best football is ahead of you now going into your fourth year in Buffalo? Um, you know, I wish I wish I could guarantee that it's my best year. That's what you strive for, right? You strive to be the, the better version of yourself. Uh, with every year, you gain perspective, but you also know you're a depreciating asset right? Your body is appreciated. Now, I don't feel like I'm depreciating, right? Uh, maybe hit that fine line, but um, I think just familiarity with Josh helps a ton. Uh, understanding how Sean, Brandon, the Bagulas, they run the franchise, run the organization, what they expect uh, day in and day out, knowing the personnel, knowing the, uh, the, the support staff, understanding that. Um, so familiarity for sure. Uh, and then just I mean, with years gains perspective. So just trying to use that to fuel uh, where I can tweak my game to be a better football player. You're like 30 years old. You can't make us feel that old, Mitch. <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast. Um, one more question for you. You talked about Dorsey being a new part of this offense this season. Why do you think he's a good fit as the new offensive coordinator here? Well, I think he, he's passionate. Uh, you see it on the sidelines, Dorsey runs with passion. It's amazing. He's a different guy on the football field and off the field. Always a great leader, always a great person through and through, you know, on and off. Um, guy who loves football, uh, has a great relationship with Josh. Uh, and I think that plays a long way. There's going to be give and take with that. It's more of a collab rather than, you know, delegating what's going on. And, uh, uh, it's interesting. It's exciting. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to bring, but I assume he's going to put his own tweak on something that has already worked for us. And, and, and that's a great new challenge. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch. You're welcome. Hey, Mitch, congrats. Um, I was curious, you mentioned how, you know, your teammates are going to change a little bit naturally. Mm -hmm. You're going to need to build rapport with new guys and stuff like that. How much do you watch like every transaction happening around the league right now as you look forward to next season or do you kind of wait till the dust is settled before you look into that too much? That's a great question. Um, yeah, it's hard not to, especially in these next three days when the legal tampering period begins going into uh, when the new league year starts because transactions, it seems like there's a little bit going on the week before and then bam, all of a sudden we're it's saturated, like the Twitter saturated with it's flooded. It, I'd be lying to you if I didn't look at that and uh, and just kind of see. It's not so much as uh, you know who's gone where, who you're gonna have to play, but you know you've you've gained relationships with some of these people. You've played with them before at sometimes. Uh, so a lot of it's just excitement for these guys, and also just how these faces are changing um, within different franchises and stuff. Also a different perspective on I've done this before I've gone through free agency. So I understand what the challenges and the blessings of that. So that's also interesting. Um, yeah, I'd be lying to you if I didn't look at it, uh, religiously, especially today and these next few days, just because so much happens. No, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Big Money Mitch, Mookie Hawkins, Wolf on Sports Tenetti. How's it going? Mookie, what's up, dude? How's that baby going on, man? How's dude, he doing? He, no one told me the jump from one to two is a sucker. But <laughs> it's all, I mean, it's a blessing, right? Like it's it's all good, but it's uh it's for it's it's a it's a challenge. But he's great, he's awesome, healthy, just a beautiful little boy, and uh, very happy. Absolutely, man. And uh going into this season. Uh, how how do you hit that reset button? Being center actually is kind of like the quarterback of the offensive line. So uh, you finally get some continuity with guys who are no longer here. So right. how do you like hit that reset button with, you know, picking up new guys tendencies and what a new offensive coordinator and an O-line coach is looking for coming into this season? Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a, when you put it like that, right. It's, it's, it seems almost a little, just a little tiny bit daunting. Right. But 
it's a great challenge. Uh, it reinvigorates you. Just like I was talking to George earlier, you know, sometimes a change of scenery, a change of pace can be a good thing. Now, when you lose your friends and guys you put snaps with together, that's devastating, right? Um, but, you know, they'll have new opportunities and we'll, we'll, we'll love them for it. And uh, I think it's just going to be a huge give and take and it's going to put an onus on the opportunity we have together to be the best we can be and, uh, and rapidly get better every day. You know, all these cliches are around for a reason, right? You know, so we'll just hammer those out and then try to get better every day because it'll be a challenge, but it'll be, it'll be a fun one. Speaking of a fun one, man, now you've gone through the free agency process yourself <laughs> and uh, being extended is a great thing, you know, being the center here. How contagious is playing in Buffalo? Well, well, I mean, in 2019, three years ago, when I signed with Buffalo, you know, you have preconceived notions of places, right? And uh, I, I always tell people the beautiful thing when I got to Buffalo was all those were shattered. You know, I always knew the fan base was rabid and, and uh, it was a love for the sport. But, man, the town, uh, the organization, it's been a beautiful – it's been a blessing. And, uh, and we've been playing good football um, is it contagious? Hell yeah, it's contagious. It's contagious to have a kick-ass quarterback behind you playing good ball, have a defense that plays lights out together, uh, have a locker room that goes through awesome wins and devastating losses, and, and you kind of come out of the other side of it. Um, it's good. It's a good locker room to be part of, man, and uh, and that's what that's what drives us all is just the guys in that locker room. So uh, very happy to be here. Absolutely, man. Great to have you here for another two. Let's get Thank to work. You, I appreciate you, pal. Hey, Mitch. Um, I was curious, you know, we've talked to, we talked to Roger just before you, we talked to Isaiah earlier today, and there's kind of this sense from both of them, obviously Isaiah was already there, but the being in Buffalo is like, a, you know, players want to be there. They see what's happening in Buffalo and they want to come. Is that, how different is that from even when you came in 2019? Like, how much has that changed or how do you kind of keep that culture going? So you've got guys around the league looking at Buffalo and being like, I want to be a part of that group. Well, I think to keep the culture going, to answer that question is you, you try to win as many games and be competitive as possible. That inherently is a good tool for recruiting. Free agency is an interesting deal um, because, you know, this is the first time for a lot of guys that you have an opportunity to change not only your life, but your family's life. So it's a double-edged sword, whereas you have to follow where the money is. Um, and you all, you hope it pairs up with a team that's competitive. Now, uh, now guys who have already gone through that second contract, going through third, fourth contracts, uh, that definitely plays an appealing role in a team that wins and, and, and has the opportunity to uh, make a push for it. But the, uh, the great thing about football is no matter who you bring in, what is all on paper, the, the, the slate is clean. I mean, who saw the Bengals go to the Super Bowl last year? I mean, no one did. Uh, and that's a testament to them. That's a testament to, uh, you know, putting everything aside and just playing with the team they have. So, um, yeah, I think free agency is great. It's great to bring in talent, um, but we're going to have to put that together to uh, be competitive. Do you feel like there's any extra – I don't, maybe pressure is not the right word, but like extra, you know, that now that's the expectation and guys are coming in being like, oh, this is a place where you win and that sort of thing. Does that add anything extra to kind of getting the group together? Yeah. Uh, I think when you win, there's now you create an expectation and that's a great thing. Um, you know, the expectation now, the standard is set for not only us, but for the fan base, they're expecting a competitive team and rightfully so. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, the, there's, there's a target on your back now, whereas you used to kind of fly under the radar, which is a fun thing to be. It's, it's the right you earn uh, at, from playing good football, but it's also brings us challenges because now you have to bring your A game every week. 